Hello, my name is Matthew Kapala. I'm the founder and managing director of Alphamatic. We are a full service SEO agency. I'm also the author of best selling SEO Like I'm Five and a junk professor at NYU. In this session, three Google changes that will make or break your SEO. At the end of this video, you learn how to stay in front of Google and it evolves at a massive speed. Second, the algorithm changes that happened just recently, uh, 2015, 2016. And lastly, how to work with Google, not against it, to accomplish your marketing objectives. Woody Allen once famously said, 80% of success is showing up. In 2016, with SEO, is not much different. Why? Because 80% of consumers search for a product or service before purchasing. So in 2016 and beyond, invisibility is a fate much worse than failure. One thing about Google is that it's constantly changing. You've seen the new logo in 2015. You've seen there is a new CEO in place. But most importantly, there is an entirely new engine. When it comes to Google, change is the only constant. In fact, every day, 78% of search results get some ranking fluctuations. Every month, eight and a half out of 10 search results change positions as well. Now, let's Google time travel. If you performed a Google search in 2001, and you search for one of the co-founders of Google, Larry Page, you would see 10 blue links to actually websites with zero information about Google's founder. Google did not know who Larry Page was in a way. Now, if you fast forward to 2016, you see that Google knows exactly who Larry Page is. They use a lot of data to put that information out on Google's front page. So Google has moved away significantly from the 10 blue links to being the answer to your information. So you see the knowledge graph, you see the social media feeds, and you see much, much more information for the user. The change number one is the new lay of the land. Today, only 15% of Google are the 10 blue links to websites. 85% is the knowledge graph, the videos, the social feed, Google Maps, you name it. All that content today is what marketers should be focused on. Because otherwise, you end up competing for a very small uh, piece of Google's real estate. Imagine, you used to search for weather in New York. You would get a link to a company like weather.com or weatherchannel.com and that would be the answer for the user. And at the same time, those websites would be able to monetize that traffic. If you search for Delta flights, you would go to Delta to check your flight status, and Delta would show you a banner for the SkyMiles uh, program. Today, Google shows all that information on top of Google through those direct answer snippets. So there is no need for the user to actually click anyway. And as you can see, all those answered boxes appear actually uh, above the fold. So a user needs to scroll to see those traditional blue links to websites. Even on money keywords, such as enterprise software, which costs $25 a click if you buy ads on Google, you don't even see one blue link to a branded website above the fold. You'll see the page search ads on the top. Right now, actually, Google expanded from three to four the page search links. And be beneath that, you'll see the answer box with the definition of enterprise software. So it's a big change from what it was before. In another example, when you search for another keyword that a lot of brands competing on and spending a lot of money, such as credit cards, you will not even see a one link to a credit card company. 
you'll see the definitions of credit card, you see the news, you see a lot of different information, for even the Wikipedia link, but not one link to a credit card company. You have to go to the second page of Google to see two links to Discover and to MasterCard. And American Express and Visa are still not there. And by the way, only less than 1% of users go to the second page of Google. Majority of users tend to refine their search. Second major change is that the semantic search has been expanding. And semantic search really means that there's a whole lot of resources that are used by Google to come up with Google search result pages. It used to be content and keywords. Today, through semantic search, Google connects meanings and Google is trying to figure out um, what, the user, what the user's intentions are and the meaning behind the keywords they, that they enter. With that being said, the new engine that Google has in place right now called the Hummingbird represents this new machine learning algorithm that has a massive vault of information about users, the keywords, the browsing habits, and so on. Google uses three points of data to collect all this information. They use Chrome, they use uh, Android, and they use Google.com. And it's really enough for them to collect so much information that is unmatched by any other search engine in the world. In anticipation for changing of user habits, including the mobile, including sort of new access points to information, whether it's connected car or internet radio, uh, motion detection, um, digital TV. Google has built a very impressive infrastructure of products, such as the driverless car, Motorola, Android, to keep the users interacting and requesting for more information with Google so that they can expand their information. If a consumer is driving a car and interacts with internet radio and asks, where can I get the pizza in this neighborhood? Google does not want to provide them with 10 best results. They want to answer that question. So all of it makes sense if you think about where the search behavior is headed. Lastly, the third major change is the introduction of Rank Brain, Google's new artificial intelligence machine learning algorithm. Rank Brain today is said to process as much as uh, a third of users' search queries. Google recently announced that among the 300 algorithms, Rank Brain is among the three top algorithm signals that Google is taking into consideration when ranking pages on its front page. So in 2016 and beyond, it's very smart for marketers to understand what that rank brain is all about. To summarize, I want to tell you to try to stop chasing the algorithms. About 600 times a year, Google is updating its algorithms. So it's like twice a day. If the tree falls in the forest, we don't really need to know about it. So instead of chasing the algorithm, try to get in front of it. Try to anticipate and try to understand what Google is trying to do. Again, my name is Matthew Kapala, and I wish you best of luck with your SEO strategies in 2016 and beyond.